my viewers, my students. So welcome again to uh, Java Tutorials, uh, GUI. And um, this uh, video is all about how to add pictures in your Java objects, such as buttons and labels. Uh, for the interest of time, we will try to, as much as possible, uh, use shortcut methods in order to demonstrate this um, uh, tutorial. So let me show you our objectives. So here is our objectives. And as you can see, there are plenty of objects. And to do this manually will uh, consume you a lot of time. OK, and uh, you can see there are plenty of labels here. These are, uh, this portion here are labels. Just one moment. Okay, so these are labels, and there are labels also in the top. And you notice that there are uh, pictures on those objects. Over here is a picture, and in these three rectangles are also pictures. And also take note, uh, these are uh, what you call, they have functions, by the way. And what I mean is these objects not only shows pictures, but also executes commands, which I'm going to show you later. So the objects here are actually buttons, buttons with pictures, okay? Like this, these are also buttons. But the one in the top, the one that I, uh, you're seeing here, is not actually a picture but it is a label so this is the label with an icon okay i'm going to demonstrate this as well and uh, also i forgot to mention that in this objective we have text fields so these are inputs text fields and um also, in this tutorial, I'm not going, I'm not also demonstrate how to put pictures, but also how to create a program that calculates the order of the customer. So this is what we are going to do. When we click a cheeseburger, the information of the cheeseburger will appear on these uh, text fields. And when we click the veggie burger or the double burger, all the necessary information or related information will also appear in these text fields. So that means we have three programs for these buttons. These buttons that you are seeing now is the save, the print, and the order again or clear. Again, for the interest of time, we are not going to, to do that. Maybe from some other time, we can create a tutorial how to save this in the database and how to print it on the receipt in a PDF file or in any form which, uh, which uh, um, capable for, the, for the, uh, the user to print it on the small printer. Okay, and another thing about this uh, project. When we put a number in the price, let's say, I oh, no, no. When we put a number in how many do you buy, let's say two, the total amount will automatically compute by multiplying this how many into the price of the hamburger. Okay. So that means we're going to create a listener or an event that when you press okay when you key press in the keyboard there will be an event or there will be a instructions that will be executed 
by this Java program that we created. Okay, so I hope you understand now our, uh, uh, what you call, uh, our uh, procedures or our uh, objectives for this uh, tutorial. Okay, so now let's go to NetBeans to demonstrate that. Uh, just one moment, please. Just one moment. Okay, here you go. So now let's uh, let's create first our frame. And uh, I already mentioned the frame in our tutorials. Okay, in our previous tutorials. And uh, what I have here now is I already already created the frame. Okay, so let me put it here. Okay, of course, of course, to create a frame, we have to command like this, we have to put your own name, you try to invent as much as uh, you can. And uh, we put the title of our restaurant, which is hilarious restaurant. Okay. And after that, we command the frame to become visible so everyone can see it. And of course, to be resizable. Want our frame to become resizable. And by the way, I have to arrange well because everything here is not in order. Uh, let's see. Uh -huh. That's wonderful. Okay. And um, of course, we have to command the frame that whenever we close it, it will totally close. Because if we did not put this, then if we press the X of the form, then it will not close. And finally, we have to, to um, what do you call this, to arrange the frame. We have to arrange the frame into its coordinates where it will appear on your screen. These are the coordinates, the X and Y axis, and these are the height and the width of the frame. Okay, so let's try to run this and let's have a look. Okay, here's the result. Take a look. There's the hilarious restaurant on the top. That's the title, and this is the size of the frame. Uh, since I share it, uh, you will not see the exact location of this, but uh, later I will show you later. Okay, so we will just focus on the uh, objects of these uh, things that we are doing. Okay, so now let's continue. So the next step we are going to do here is we are going to create the panels. So we are going to create two panels here. So the first one, okay. So the first panel should be on the north, something like this, or maybe this one, like, okay. This is the first panel. And the second panel should be on the center and not the bottom. And these are the objects that will, uh, uh, what you call the scope of the objects of these panels. Okay, so let's continue one moment. So, okay, so to create the panel, uh, we command J panel. Uh, wait, 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 one moment. Uh, we can't, we cannot uh, arrange the objects without creating a grid constraints. So to do that, we have to declare grid constraints on the top, like this, and name your, uh, whatever name you like for the grid, and then try to put a buffer or set bounds for this, okay, by putting the insets, and then try to type the spacing that you like. Okay, so now that we have a grid, the next thing we should do now is to put the panels Okay, here's the first panel, and also we have to put these uh, parameters inside so that it will follow the grid. Okay, it will follow this. Whenever you try to uh, create a location for the objects that you wish to insert. And of course, we create the second panel, which is this. 
okay panel one panel two and then it will not appear it will not appear on the form or the frame without adding it to the frame so we have to command the frame to add first the panel one okay and then we add the panel two okay something like that so this one is from the notes and the other one is in the center okay so when we run this program we will not see it unless we put a color for the panel i already discussed this in our uh, first tutorials for the java frame and uh, you can try to visit that if you have time so again we will not uh, demonstrate that because our focus is to create the whole thing okay uh, as you can see in the objective until we put images on the uh, specif specified objects that i have shown you okay so now that we have frame uh, i mean the panel uh, the next thing we should do is to is to create the uh, what you call the label okay so we first focus on the title of the label and we will put it on the bottom of this panel so we create a space here, by the way, and we put the label here, okay? And the name of the label is J label one. I mean label one, sorry. And the purpose of this label is to display the title. So we put the title here, okay? And then we enlarge the letters of this uh, title by putting a font, method like this okay so set font and then and close by the new font is the name of the font you like and the characteristic of this font if it is bold or underlined and the size of the font okay so that is what we're uh, going to do and of course another thing is that um we have to put the coordinates where this label will appear. Okay, where this label will uh, appear. So we put it on the top of this J label like this. Okay, specify the X and Y axis. Uh, it will go to the one, uh, X, uh, one and then two, you know, X and Y two. And uh, if you run this, if you run this, it will not follow the grid. Sorry. Why? It will not also show up because you have to put this label into the panel. Okay, to the first panel on the top, the ones that we have created. We add it, we specify its name, and also the coordinates, which is the grid go. Okay, so it will go to this uh, to the top and then to the center. Okay, so let's try to run this. Let's see. One moment. Okay, you can see now there's the label. Welcome to hamburgers. And the, the font is Helvetica and the size is 20. And the grid coordinates is 1 and 2. It goes in the top. But if you wish to go to the very top, then try to put it 0 and then 1. Okay, so let's close it again and uh, let's get back to the code. So let's go to the, our next step. So the next step is um, uh, just one moment. Just one moment. So the next thing is we should do this label, which is um, which is this one here. What is the order of the customer? Okay, and it is a very small thing, but uh, I think we should not put a font methods on this. So let's try to get back to the codes and let's have a look. Okay, let's, uh, let's do that, by the way. So to do that, uh, all you have to do, of course, is to create a label. Okay, and uh, we name it as label two, and we put a text 
on the label. And for your information, this text can be transferred inside this J label. So you will no longer type this command. It will just shortcut over here. So what I mean is this, okay? You have the option to do like this, okay? And then remove it uh, like that, okay? So, but anyhow, for present for uh, presentation purposes, I will just leave it like that. Okay, just like the grid, I mean, the grid of the label one. So we will also create a grid for this label, uh, label two, okay? And we paste it like this, and then, um, one moment, one, two, one, three, okay, this one is done. And of course, this label will not show because we have to put a panel one that add, okay? And instead of this label one, then we have to put this label, zero, label two. Okay, so now it's finished. So if you wish to see what's the result of this program, I will show you over here. There we go. What is the color of the what is the order of the customer? Then welcome to hamburgers. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so let's continue. So the next thing we should do is to create the buttons. To do a button, or to create a button, all you have to do is to do like this, J button, and then the name of the button you want, button one. Or if you wish, you can customize, you can create BT and cheeseburger. As long as you understand and as long as you are, uh, it's relevant, by the way. So let's create a button for the um, veggie burger and for this, uh, what burger is that? Double burger, okay. So now we have three buttons on the top and of course this button will not show up. So remember, always add it to the panel. So we create a version of panel for these buttons. So the first button, the first button should appear on this, yeah, okay, this one. Okay, so there's the button. And the second button uh, should appear on the, on the, uh, what you call the sides. But the, what do I mean sides? I mean in the center. And to do that, you have to adjust the X axis. Instead of zero, you go to one. So it will go to the center or to the, from left to right. Okay, something like that. And both of them are uh, what you call, the, the Y axis is both uh, the same three because they are in the single line, okay? Uh, if you if you if you uh, don't understand, I will show you the drawing. So what I mean is is this. This is the they are in the same line. So they are all bought in three, and this one is a different uh, what you call this? It's a different axis or x axis. They are the other one is from uh, zero. This one is zero and this one is one. And later we will do this as two. Okay, so th those are the X and Y axis of this, uh, of these drawings. So let's wait a moment. Okay, so let's get back to NetBeans and let's do the double burger. That is button three. And let's put it here. Okay, so now we have three buttons and it's already added on the panel two instead of panel one. And let's have a look. Okay, here we go, three buttons. Okay, 
So later it will go up because uh, we will add additional objects for this frame. So now let's create the labels and the text box. So let's go to uh, application of the Java and then let's go down here. Okay, so what we're going to do is to create the labels. Okay, so remember what I told you before, when you are creating a label, you can also immediately put the caption inside the label. And this one is for the product number. Okay, and the other one is for the product name of the, ham the hamburger itself. And a design label for the price. And for the how many or for the quantity and i named this as label one label two label three label four because uh, uh, what i mean is what is the label what is the purpose of the label it's just to display the text and we are not going to use that to calculate or to, to have special processing uh, try to do that when you are involved on that type of processing but uh, if you wish to simplify your your programming, uh, you can just put those labels like the uh, labels like that. Okay. So now we have finished with the label, and just like the things that we have done before, we have to put the grid location, and we have to add it on the panel two. Okay, each label. So first is we have to create a grid coordinates and adding a panel to label one. And second is for the label two. And then for the label three. Okay, and then for the label four. Moment. And then for the label five. Okay, so let's try to have a look at uh, the end result of this program. Let's run it. And here you go. There goes the labels. Product number, product name, price, how many, and then total amount. Okay, so now that we have done it, then uh, let's now do these um, text fields. Okay, just write. So now for the text field, so let's put a space here below and let's put the first text for field, which is TXT one, but actually I can name it as TXT product if you like. Okay. TXT product, uh, product number. And this one is for the, for the uh, product name TXT two. Okay, but uh, if you if you only like, we can do it like this: uh, txt product name. Okay, or uh, we try to simplify it like that so that uh, we can uh, we can we can uh, demonstrate quickly. Okay, and then this one is uh, text three, and this text field is for the. Uh, the price of the hamburger and over here the txt4 is for the quantity how many how many hamburgers would you like and finally the txt5 is for this um, txt amount or the amount of money that we are going to pay for this hamburger and again, just like our labels, we have to do it like this. We have to set its location and we add it to the panel. And uh, first we have to add the first text box or the text field, text one. And uh, this one here is for the text two. And obviously you already know what will happen to the other text fields such as the txt3, the txt4, and the txt5. Okay, so it's finished. 
So if you wish, we can uh, also connect this one. Okay. So it's already added in panel two and it's already arranged by grid go. So let's try to run. Okay, here you go, there goes the text box. So I can uh, type it here, but uh, of course, uh, the purpose of this text box is the moment we click the cheeseburger, all the information related to these burgers will appear inside the text box. And we will just only change how many or the quantity, and then it will compute. Okay, so let's continue for the three buttons here, for the other objects. Okay, so the next thing we should do is the buttons, save and record. But we have to first create a space here and then put it this one, uh, this way, sorry. Okay, so this is for the save record. Unfortunately, there are no commands we are going to put there because uh, a little bit quite uh, complicated for you since we are not yet jumping on the tutorial for the database. And this one is for the receipt. And this button here is for the order again, or clear the text box. Okay, so we try to arrange this by pressing the shift tab and highlight. Okay, so again and again, just like our text fields and labels before, we have to create a coordinates for the location of each buttons that we have created. So we put it here in this place. This is for the button four, which is the save and record. And here is the print receive. And the other one is for the order again. Okay, so just to remove the spaces here, but if you want, we can leave it like this. Okay, so now it's finished. So let's run. Here you go. There are the buttons. You save the print and the order again. Uh, one moment, one moment. So I will try to show you. Oh, okay, here you go. There's the three buttons, and I think everything is fine here. So we don't have any objects. Okay, that's it. So the next objective we are going to do is to put the programs for the cheeseburger, the veggie burger, and the double burger. And uh, I think before that, we create the program for this, uh, how many customers would you like to buy? Uh, how many uh, hamburgers will the customer want to buy? Uh, let's say, let, let's put two or any numbers, it will automatically show up uh, uh, how many, uh, what you call, the calculation for this, uh, for the uh, price and the quantity. Okay, so this is what will happen. So let's put the program first, the key press listener, for this uh, particular text box, which is Text four. So this is txt one, txt two, txt three, txt four. This is our target, and we put the com computations uh, for this by touching this txt five. I mean, targeting the txt five to multiply these two. So those are the instructions that we are going to insert. So one moment, please. Okay, so, so to create a listener for the text file, or for the txt, what you call this txt4, just one moment. So in the bottom of this frame, we are going to put uh, the name, which is txt4. Okay, and then, after that, we are going to put the method, which is add listener with a curly brace, of course. And then with a curly brace together with the terminator, this close parenthesis and then semicolon. Uh, semicolon. 
And inside of this, we're going to put the override. Okay, the override word. And after the override, uh, we will then create this, uh, what you call a public release key event. We will put now the event itself that the moment you type, oh, sorry. The moment you press the key, either if it is up arrow key or down arrow key, then something will happen. Okay, something will happen. And that something will happen is the computation itself. We are going to multiply the price and the quantity. Okay, so to do that, we have to put float. There are two floats here. The first one is the price, and the second one is the quantity. And inside the price is the um, inside the price is the contents of our txt tree. Okay, because that's the price of our hamburger that is the representation and for the quantity we have to put it like this we have to represent it by itself which is the xt4 because it contains how many hamburgers would you like to have and then of course we have to create a variable what variable is this this variable is the total amount and to do the total amount we have that we have to multiply the price into quantity okay that's it so what's next how do we show this total amount to our customer, I mean to the user. Which text box is our target? I already told you. So that text box is the TXT5. Okay, the TXT5 is the one will display the result of this transaction. So we copy the total amount variable and insert the inside. Okay, so one moment, I guess. Uh, I think I made a mistake. Set text. Uh, just one moment. TXT5. Total amount. Uh, one moment. Ah, sorry. I forgot to put the space and the plus. It's supposed to be like this so that uh, you know, it will combine the strings because it's already a string. We cannot uh, just uh, jump in the number. Okay. So that's it. Okay. So now let's try to test this program. Okay, let's assume that the price of the hamburger is 120 pesos and the customer wants to buy one. So you see, there is the answer immediately. Immediately appear in the, in the total price. Let's do it again. The price of the hamburger is around 300 pesos. And in this text box, let's say two. So notice this total amount when I type two. See, immediately it types 600. I mean, it computes and it shows 600. Uh, let's type one and it's automatic. Let's type 23. Let's type 56 or let's type zero. You see, that is the capability of this key press. Uh, key, 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 key listening event of this Java. Okay, so let's continue. 
Okay, for other purposes, by the way, we, there is a, um, okay, let's finish. Uh, just one moment. Okay, so if you wish to put any other events for this uh, key press of uh, Java, there are many other options that you can put. So you can put these two, the key type and the key press. You can specify which keys, okay? Let's say, for example, the enter key, and then you can write the instructions, what, it, what will Java will do about it? And what keys are typed? Let's say you press the uh, control W or whatever keys, and then you can uh, specify which, uh, what you call this, which commands or instructions you wish to insert. So let's try to copy this. And we are going to apply this on the, what you call this, in the TXT5 or TXT, TXT3. Because the moment you type the price, immediately that thing should also calculate the total amount. So let's first create the TXT5 here. Okay, so there's the TXT5, and let's copy the same instruction. So let's copy this one. And then paste. Okay, so there you go. So now let me uh, run, let's uh, make a test. Okay. That's right. So let me type here 200 pesos and type two. There's the 400 pesos. Let's change this one. Let's make 100. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I made a mistake. It is not TXT4, it's TXT3, I guess. One moment. Let's wait. I made a mistake, sorry. My eyeglasses. <laughs> okay, it's supposed to be TXT3, sorry. Because TXT3, according to our map. Okay, this is TXT1, TXT2, TXT3, sir. So this one. Okay, this is TXT4. So the moment we type a price here, I mean, yes, price, then uh, it will also compute. Okay, so let's get back again to the codes. So there's, there you go, TXT3. Okay, and same instructions like TXT4, and let's try to run. Okay, now let's type something here 100 and then 1. Let's make it 200, and there you go. Immediately, it changed the value. So let's say 500. Let's say this one is 12 hamburgers, and this one is 670 pesos. Uh, this one is one peso hamburger, 250 pesos, and you see uh, both of them are following the same instruction and the same event that when I press a, button, uh, press a key, it will do its job. Okay, so that's it. So let's get back again to our NetBeans and continue to, to accomplish the buttons. Okay, what about the cheeseburger, the veggie burger and everything else? Okay, so we are done with the key listener for this Okay, for this text box. So the next thing we should command are the buttons. Okay, just wait. So the first button is the cheeseburger. Okay, there we go. We put an action on this burger. And also, we have to put its term uh, the Terminator, okay? 
And once we have done this, we have to put the override. And then we put the action perform. In the bottom of this is the action perform. And this action perform, you have to put the curly brace, the pair curly brace for this. And finally, the instruction. Okay, what is the instruction of this? Uh, we are going to tell the first text box to show the product number of this. And by the way, I invented this product number, but it is up to you or it's up to your customers or your uh, clients what, what product number it will show in the screen the moment I press the button for the cheeseburger. Okay. And then the next thing, of course, is to display the cheeseburger in the product name, which is represented by text two, and the original price for this cheeseburger, which is 94.5 pesos. It will show in, in a text three. And of course, every time we order a cheeseburger, the default number of burgers we choose is one. And we have the option to change it later if you, if, uh, if you decide. And another thing we should instruct to this button is to compute, to calculate the amount, because there is already the price and there's already the, the uh, quantity. So we will just copy this instruction. Oh, sorry. We will just copy this instruction and let's put it on this button here. Okay. Uh, I think we have to try this. Okay, let's try to run the program one moment. I have to arrange it correctly. Okay, let's run. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm going to click the cheeseburger. Watch. There you go. There's the product number, the cheeseburger, the price, and immediately there is the quantity and the answer. And then let's say I have a family with me when ordering a cheeseburger. And one of my family members says, I want five pieces or five orders of cheeseburger. You see, immediately it changes. And let's assume that I am the manager of this hilarious restaurant and I wish to give this customer a discount. Instead of 94.5 price, I will give it, uh, let's say 80.50 pesos price. And as you can see, it automatically computes the amount. I hope you understand the scenario. Okay, so now let's apply the same thing with the veggie burger and the double burgers, okay? So now I will close this. Just one moment. Okay, so let's do the second button. Okay, this right. Okay, second button here. This is for the Hawaiian burger. Oh no, this is veggie burger. Veggie burger. And also I will try to copy the compute uh, the calculation, the instruction of this bottom one and send it here. Okay. So I hope it is arranged. Okay, so this is button two, it's done. Button one, okay. And then we do the button, uh, button three. Okay, there's the button three and there's the double burger and the price is more expensive. And also let me copy the 
calculation instructions and put it here. Okay, so now we have done. We are done with this uh, button three, two, and then one. Let's try to run. Okay, veggie burger, there you go. Double burger, I would like to order three. Veggie burger, I would like to order six. Cheeseburger, I would like to order eight. Okay, so now we are finished with this uh, skeleton of the program. And the next thing we should do now is to put the pictures in each button and also the logo on the top of this frame which is the Hilarious Restaurant. So now let's close and let's do that thing. <clears throat> Just one moment. Okay, so, okay, congratulations. You are done with this. Then um, let's go back to the top. Okay, here's the top, by the way. And uh, let's put the pictures. And how do we add pictures? To add the picture, uh, you have to. What should I? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, let's put the pictures here. Okay. So to create the picture, all you have to do is to declare image something like this image icon okay and then uh invent a, a variable let's say my picture and then equals and after that you type again the name of our uh, data type which is image icon and then open and close, and then the double quote. Inside this double quote is the part or the file name of your picture. And where is the picture? Where is my picture that I would like to show? Where is it located? Let me show you on my computer. Okay, so what I have here is the folder in my drive C called Turbo C3. And I already put three pictures there. There is the hilarious restaurant, which I created in Canva. And there are three hamburgers here, which we will insert later. And I took it on the pixabay.com. Okay, pixabay. If you wish, I can share it to you one moment. So let's go to Pixabay. There you go. There are 2.4 million stunning free images there that you can use for your own program. And uh, you can simply save it in your computer. But be careful because some of these pictures are not free. Okay, let's see this one here. So the moment you see the free download, that means you can get it without any problems. But if there is a money, or I mean amount or price there, that means it's not free. So you can take this hamburger if you want. Okay, but I'm not going to demonstrate how to save that on your computer. We already have these three burgers already. So all we have to do is to just insert it in our Java using the commands I've shown you before. So let's get back to NetBeans and let's type the, uh, what you call this? The file name. So the location of the file name is this. We have to copy it or cut it if you like. And then there is the name, Hilario Restaurant. Okay, remember, and the, the, the extension name is JPG, okay? So let's get back to Java NetBeans and put like this. Immediately, the Java created the slash for this uh, path. All you have to do is to follow its uh, routine. 
And then you type Hilario Restaurant.jpg. Okay, so that's it. So now you have the image or the icon. So the next thing you should do now is to is to uh, what you call pick the picture. And to do, to pick a picture, you have to declare two images. The first image is to to get the picture, and the second image is to process the picture. Okay, so this one is pick my picture. There is the variable. And then you have to type the equals. And then uh, get this my picture name, put it over there. And then you command the my picture to get the image. Okay, get the image and then finish. Okay, so once it is finished, this image here, you have to create another variable. Let's say uh, process my image. You can make any variable you want as long as it is related to what we're going to do. And then tell this pick my picture variable to get the scale get uh, i forgot something get scaled instance and specify the the height and the width and by the way i want this automatically something like java that uh, awt uh, yes i think um, just one moment i will try to recall uh, java awt dot image something uh, i think i forgot yes i think it's image image okay that scale yeah scale smooth okay java that Java that awt that scale smooth and then um, semicolon of course and then finally we tell my picture it's finished okay so we'll try to do it like this okay equals equals new image icon sorry But this time, your image icon should be the process image. Okay? There's the process image. If you don't do that, then um, we cannot scale the picture. But if you do it like this procedure that I have done, then uh, it will be uh, organized. I mean, it will be scaled into smooth and uh, in a correct manner. Okay, and then now that we have this uh, uh, picture, it will not show in our. Um, it will still not show in our uh, content. Just one moment. Uh, just one moment. Okay, <clears throat> how do we how do we show this thing? So again, I told you that to show that we have to use those objects like label and button. So let's create a label for this, uh, for this particular picture here. And let's declare J label and then label, uh, I think we have already label one. Or I think LBL zero if you like. Okay, and then equals new, J label open and close and then semicolon. Oh, I make a, I made a mistake there. One moment, okay. And then of course, uh, we have to set the location for this label. But before that, but before that, 
we have to put the picture. So table zero. That the command there is supposed to be set icon. I don't know if it is here. Ah, there we go. Set icon. There's the command. There is the method. Okay. And then the picture. So in this case, the picture is already there, my picture. And of course, we have to add this into the panel. We finally do that. Okay, just uh, one moment. Uh, <clears throat> I think we have to copy this. Copy and then paste. And instead of label one written there, we just we just changed this as uh, sorry sorry. This is the one we should copy. <clears throat> and then we make it as label zero instead of label one. And it's added on the panel one. Okay, hopefully this will work. So let's try. I oh, know it's one, two. So we have to put it as zero and then one. Let's try. Okay, there you go. There's the picture, which unfortunately it is not arranged well. I think we have to adjust the coordinates. One moment. Okay, let's try to make it as zero two. Okay, hopefully this one will work. So let's try to run again. Uh, okay, very good. There you go. There's the hilarious restaurant arranged together with the title, Welcome to Hamburgers and the objects. Okay, so now that you have done it, we can also apply that with the buttons, <clears throat> okay? All we have to do is to do the same procedure and change the file name of the picture. So let's get back to our NetBeans and uh, let's do that quickly. So over here, we try to copy this and then let's go to the button. The other buttons, this one here. <clears throat> or perhaps we put it here. Hmm? So this one is my picture one, which already used by the Hilarious Restaurant logo. Let's put it as my picture one. Let's put a number on it. There's another one here, my process image one, my pic pick my picture one, my picture one over there. And instead of Hilarious Restaurant, <clears throat> we will put the file name Cheeseburger. <clears throat> Let's try to copy the Cheeseburger, <clears throat> uh, this one here. And just copy the, the file, not, not the whole file, but the file name only. <clears throat> So over here is paste cheeseburger, okay? And then let's command the button one. The button one will be set. The icon will be, what will be the icon? The icons will be the my picture one there. <clears throat> okay, let's try to run. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, there you go. Okay, there's the picture of the burger. Unfortunately, our window is adjusted also automatically. So we can somehow resize it. Okay, and then uh, show it like that. <clears throat> okay, so we stop the sharing at this moment. 
Okay, uh, the picture is uh, so much, you know, it's, it's very big. I think we have to adjust it into 100 by 100. And uh, let's test. Okay, I think this is now appropriate. The size of the picture is uh, well arranged with the size of the, uh, the form. I think we have to, I think I have to arrange the form also, the frame, one moment. So let me go to the frame. There you go, there is the size. I think we have to make it uh, 1000 also, or 900, let me see. Okay, I guess this is okay. But it depends also in the, in the, in the screen that you are using, the resolution of the screen you're going to use in your, in your own device. Okay, so anyhow, let's continue. So let's get back to the buttons. As you can see now, we have done with button one. Let's do the button two. Okay, so all I have to do is to just copy this and then paste it here. So instead of button one, let's make button two. And instead of my picture one, let's make it my picture two. And also with its uh, uh, related variables, we put it two. Okay, instead of cheeseburger, this one's supposed to be a, a uh, veggie burger. So let's go back to our to, uh, folder and let's try to copy this. Okay, and you have to import it here. Okay. So that's it. And also we do that on button three. We just copy it, or copy this things we have done, and change the variables. This one is my picture three, along with its related components. This one is my picture three, and this one is button three. And instead of Burgi Burger, of course, that one is the double burger. So now let me deliver it to Jabanet Beans. Okay. So I think everything here is fine. So this one as well, and also this. So let me run and let's see what it looked like in our uh, end result. Okay, here we go. So we have done, we are finished. So that is how you put pictures on these uh, Java objects. First, we put it on the label and then we put it on the buttons. Try to play with the other objects. Maybe you can put that in the combo box or the list box or uh, any other things. Or maybe in the check box as well. You can uh, try to apply that. Okay, uh, but let me tell you that uh, I recommend NetBeans when you are creating Java because as uh, you create a Java program here, there were there are suggestions or tool tips appearing. If there is an error or what is the suggested method or property that you would like to use, uh, just like what I experience in this tutorial. Okay, so better use the NetBeans. But if you are a traditional programmer, then you can use the Notepad. But uh, let me tell you something there. Uh, you cannot uh, immediately detect errors in that 
kind of procedure and uh, you will have uh, having difficult time of debugging your program okay so that's it so again uh, i hope you learn on this uh, tutorial and if you have any questions uh, try to message me and uh, i'm very happy to answer your uh, your concerns okay so thank you very much for watching and i wish you all a nice day bye bye